you're uh, certainly an expert in hormones, bioidentical hormones. Yes. What should people know or, or st study before they take those in terms of toxicity? Well, it was a shock to me. I mean, when I first got introduced to bioidentical hormones and started uh, administering them to my patients, I was just startled. This was my, the 20th year in practice that I did that. I'm 42 years in practice now. And when I started doing that, the results of administering hormones to menopausal women, for example, and doing it right, it was so dramatic. A little bit just revived and uh, made women so healthy that, are so much healthier, and re they were so grateful that mm -hmm. I just thought, this is great stuff. Makes sense. When you deplete these major power fuels that affect us in so many ways and you restore them, people feel better. But about 10 years into that, so my 30th year of practice, I was opening up a jar of the, the transdermal hormones that we administered, and I took a whiff of it, and it smelled very strong to me. It, it smelled something akin to alcohol. And I went, gee, I've been now asking women to rub that on their skin twice a day. And I'm a holistic doc, and I know that a lot of people can tolerate a lot of toxicity. But this thing, this is strong. Something's in there strong. And then I did the investigation of what was in there. And what you need to know about uh, adrenal and gonadal hormones is 90% of them are fat-soluble. They're not water-soluble. You put those hormones in water, they sink like a rock mm. to the bottom. They're fat-soluble. And not only that, when you look at the physics of it, the chemistry of it, they're very poorly fat-soluble. Mm. So in order to put them in a jar and be able to stick a scoop or a syringe to administer the, the exact same dosage every day, you've got to dissolve them. Well, what are people using to dissolve them? And I went on to learn that when you're looking at a jar or a pump bottle or whatever you're looking at of hormones, they are 99.7% carrier, it's called, the stuff okay. you put the hormones in. There are only three-tenths of a percent actual hormones in that bottle mm -hmm. or jar. Just a little more, just a little less. Why does that have to be so much carrier? Because these things are not soluble, and they take a lot of solvent to get them in there. So the next question came to me is, oh, well, what, is the, what solvents are they using? And I looked up the solvent profile, and I went, oh, my God. And, you, you know, the compounders even, the, this is coming from compounding mm -hmm. pharmacies. And uh, you look up the solvent profile there and the chemistry thereof, and there's been medical articles written about the toxicity of what's in those carriers. Like chest surgeon, there's a chest surgeon who has an article out there. He, his patients had an adverse effect to osulfidine. And I believe that's the name of it, but it's the cream that they put on burn patients, and okay. that's in a carrier. And he discovered that the propylene glycol that's in that carrier was poisoning some of his patients to the point of severe toxicity. Now, in bioidentical hormone land, this is nowhere near the amount of uh, the silver cream that these uh, are, are being rubbed on burn patients. Mm -hmm. But it still points out the toxicity. And anyone in holistic medicine will know there's canaries in the coal mine that tell us a small amount of poison can make some people really sick. And if it's making them sick, it's making us sick in just a slower mm -hmm. way. Well, any of you, I, I used to love working on my cars when I was a teenager in my 20s. And I, I used to love all the task of it, even rebuilding an engine I once did. It didn't run too long, but it was, I sure enjoyed it. I learned better have a mechanic rebuild that engine rather than me. But the thing I didn't like was, was emptying my radiator twice a year, which you had to do in Michigan, mm -hmm. because the antifreeze was caustic to the hands. My hands would turn white whenever, well, that's propylene glycol. And so what is one of the principal solvents? and absorption enhancers used in a lot of these compounds, and especially the pharmaceutical companies have come out with their own version of bioidenticals. They're using estradiol in the case of estrogen. They're not using bias, so there's all kinds of problems. But when you look at the solvents they're using, they've got alcohol, carbopol, propylene glycol, diethylene glycol. I mean, it's a scary list. Hmm. So when we discovered that, we went searching, well, is there anything a woman could rub on their skin that um, wouldn't have toxicity. I wouldn't. I don't want. You know, first do no harm. And uh, wasn't I, I? I have a massage therapist. I've loved massage therapists all my life. And I was asked. I asked my massage therapist, "What are you using?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he told me. And we eventually put together a combination of organic oils and 
this is what I'm really suggesting is get those carriers to be organic for one thing because they're readily available and you'll have to put them in oils and the downside is you're going to deal with a suspension when you put those hormones into a small bottle of organic oils they'll sink to the bottom too so what a woman has to do is she has to shake the bottle five times before she turns it over and puts a drop on her hand and that's the solution that I love but there's no toxicity there's no solvents in there. I once had a, a compounding pharmacist tell me, well, you, I like your little bottles there and the oils are a nice delivery system. We all like those oils and they're organic, but why don't you let me put it up in the solution for you? I said, oh, what are you going to use to do that? <laughs> and he said, he gave me the list. <laughs> Propylene glycol, uh -huh. et cetera. And I said, no, that's what we're trying to avoid. You know, women are very intelligent. They could shake a bottle. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Especially when they know why they're shaking mm. it. So that's, you can understand why the original compounded and even the pharmaceutical manufacturers have put these up in solvents because they want to administer the exact same dose every time. Sure. And, uh, but then there's the next phase of our learning, which I think is no toxicity, we don't need it, shake the bottle. And we've done studies to see that the distribution at the bottom of the bottle has almost the identical concentration that we put on the label, so the shaking works well.